Hello viewers, it's Peter Elgar from Brentwood Essex here, the old film bloke. Um, this is a short video on tricks I've learned about using my gift Mamiya C330. Because if you remember on the video I did earlier, which was a comparison of the th this one, the 330 the C220, the C330 kept jamming up on me. So I found out one or two things I'm going to share with you to um, help you to use your C330s correctly without it jamming up. I'm, I'm banished to the bedroom now because my daughter is working downstairs on her workstation. She's working from home on the, on the phone to London. So here we go. Well, the first thing is I've loaded it up with a backing paper and it works just the same as if there's a film. So I haven't wound it on. So we wind it on till it stops. Like that. Um, yes, then, then you've got to fold, fold the crank back into its hole. Now we're on number one. Then what I've found, if I touch this release here accidentally, um, like that, <coughs> you lose a frame. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the first mistake I made. So I fired one off. So wind it round and, to, and then back to the hole. What you've got to do, there's a little L for lock here. And don't drop anything. L for lock. You've got to put that onto the L position, which is back this way. Now hopefully, when you press that, it doesn't release. No, nope. the release is all locked. So the shutter's cocked. But the release is locked safely, so that's the first thing I forgot, and I lost the frame, I only got 11. So then, the, the other thing is, what causes jamming was, changing the lenses. Now, when you change the lens, there's several things to remember. So here we have a standard 80mm lens. And this is a good lens, I'll tell you what, I'll show you a picture taken with an 80mm C-Core blue dot lens. Here's one, there's an enlargement I had of a land, women's land army lady from the 1940s taken at Chatham Dockyard on a trip I organised with some camera club friends and they all dress up in the 1940s and they wear the uniforms of that period of the wartime. This is the land army lady this was taken with an 80 millimeter with a fill-in flash because she's against the light and if you look you can see the detail the time on her watch even it's a modern watch not a 1940s watch <laughs> and all the all the detail of her woman's land army and her eyes and the catch lights in her eyes from the flash it's all been resolved and this is a 11, a 12 by 16 exhibition print which I'm going to put in at my camera club done by jolly good old snapfish and I can't do prints that size this was a scan from an out of date negative and they've done a good job of that well, that's the 80 millimeter so if you want to change it to the 135 here you must make certain that your shutter on your lens is cocked now this is 135, so you've got to pull down the release, make sure it's cocked. Pull down the release, All right, that's cocked. Let's fire it off. Yes, that's uncocked. The cut shutter is now cocked. So now we do the business with changing the lens. If I can do it standing up. You have to put the little leave on the side here to unlock and make certain also your bellows is right back you don't have the bellows out at all make certain this is pointing to unlock then you can pull down the spring because inside here there's a tiny little gadget thing which engages with a spring and stops you taking it off until you put that to unlock that's very crafty. Now you can take the lens off. And then it was wound on because I wound it on to number two. So that is in the cocked position here. So now 
we put the lens on yes that's correct with the with the spring that side bring the spring round then you've got to remember there's lots to remember like the Hasselblad loads to remember put that to lock now we change the lens to 135 millimeter the other thing to remember is here you've got to change this tiny little thing I'll take my glasses off so I can see what I'm doing that little rod thing here we'll work it out a little bit there's a tiny little wheel which says 80 millimeters you've got to turn that now until it says 135 because um, 105 135 millimeter because that helps you with the focusing distance here as you rack it out you get a readout of the focusing distance for your 135 mil lens so don't have that wrong that's something to remember then the other thing to remember you've got to turn this outer one until the little red thing goes to 135 because that's on it's on 55 65 and 80 there's a tiny little red marker here you turn that round until that says on the red dot there 135 now that means the parallax inside your bellows little bar that comes down inside the focusing screen the little bar that comes down so I'm not very good at showing you things will be correct for your parallax so now how about changing the focusing screen first of all I didn't, sh didn't know how to do it here's the standard focusing hood how to change the focusing screen for another one because here I've got different focusing screens a choice of two so I've got three all together so there's one in there we f so we fold this fold this down and then you must make certain you pull out the bellows slightly then you can unscrew that take the hood off um, um, unscrew the screw which, here we are that's unscrewed now there's a little latch which is shown once you rack the bellows out like that you must rack the bellows out. if you don't you can't see the little latch that's the trick there's some tiny little screws at the back here you don't have to undo those at all you just move the little latch and I've got my glasses off I can't see you move the little latch um how do I know move the... oh there we are it it folds out oops then you can take the focusing screen off then while you've got the focusing screen off and have a look inside and check that your mirror is nice and clean yes that's all nice and clean because <laughs> because I cleaned it like all the old cameras I look after them very well so now you take your new focusing screen and you place that in making certain it goes on first to the two little holes at the back now you, you, you latch it on first at the front I do believe now it has to, it has to go into the two little holes at the back um, now what we've done wrong we've got to I think we have to I think we've got to swing this little latch out of the way again see there's loads to, there's loads of things to remember I think you have to swing that little latch out on the focusing screen. Right. The little latch should come out. Doesn't want to move. Uh, oh, here we are, that way. Fold out that way. I folded out this little latch now. See if we can fit that on. There's two little latches here which go into the two little things there put that on make certain it goes over two little the two little the two little small screws at the back ah there like that 
And then, that is secure, yes. It's gone into the two minute little screws. Now you can fold that latch back, like that, and that is now secure. Now, that's nothing to do with it. That is to fix the focusing hood or the pentaprism. It's nothing to do with changing the focusing screen. That focusing screen now changed, but how to put the pet, the, what's it called, the focus, the focus in pentaprism. I need to change my National Health teeth. We've got the pentaprism. Now that will latch on and come down, make certain this is undone here. Yes, that's seated. Now do up your little screw at the back. Gently, all gentle remember. Then you can look through here and focus up your snap with the pentaprism. Now the curtains are in focus and you can see it nice and sharp and you can see inside the bar which indicates the top of your frame when you're using a 135 lens like this. And also there's the exposure factors by which you magnify your exposure the closer you come, the bar will drop down and it will, it will give you an exposure factor. Get my glasses on and see, see what it says. That says one and a half times. Now the bar has wrapped it right out. It says one and a half times exposure increase, which is quite good on the C330 because the C220 doesn't have that. It tells you how to increase your exposure. So, that's what I've learned about the, what to do. If you want to fit the lens hood, there's a little dent here. You fit the lens hood with a little dent upright, upwards, so that it, it fits like that, snugly, and then do up this screw gently. And then you've got your lens hood on. Because the First of all, I didn't have a lens hood. The gent who gave me the C330 gave me this gave it with a lens hood. So I've got a posh on me. I've got a lens hood now. I've also got 46 millimeter filters. Let me black and white. That goes on the front. Lovely jubbly. So now we can fire away. Hopefully it won't jam up because it's all on lock. Yes. I've done the little knob correct at the side so we should be able to focus up take a snap ah take it off take it off unlock like that fire it here yes success wind it round once yes back to the little hole yes it didn't jam wind it round not too far back to the little hole take another snap Oh, it's going, it's going a treat now. Look, I've learned how to get around this jamming up. There, fantastic, folks. So that's what I've learned about the C330. <laughs> it's all these things to remember. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick little video. And if you want to support my channel expenses, you can have a look at Buy Me A Coffee down below. And I'm, you can buy me a film that, through that. Thank you very much, folks. And I'll see you again with another scintillating video, I hope.